Hey kids, it's the Best and Fly here, hope you're well. Now, for the last five years, I've owned and run this beautiful Ducati Panigale 899. And for the last two weeks, I've been riding this, the brand new for 2020 Panigale V2. Uh, the newest out of the Ducati stable, beautiful bike. Well, they're both beautiful bikes, let's face it. Anyway, the V2, as I say, brand new for 2020. Uh, lots of upgrades over the outgoing 959, which itself replaced the 899. In this video, what I'm gonna do is talk about the changes between the two bikes, do a bit of a direct comparison, and just see if those changes actually are all that much different on the uh, V2 over the 899. So if you're interested in the Panigale, stick around, stay tuned, I'll uh, tell you what I think. Okay, so I'm going to do a sort of a direct comparison of the two bikes for things like uh, handling, uh, electronics, comfort, all that sort of uh, real world stuff that you need to know when you buy a motorcycle. Uh, so without further ado, less blabbing from me, let's uh, jump on the 899 and let's go check out the differences between the two bikes. Okay, so let's talk about comfort first off then on these uh, sports bikes. What's it like on the 899? Here I am on my trusty 899. Uh, comfort, difficult concept with sports bikes. Take it as red, the sports bikes aren't basically comfortable <laughs> compared to more upright bikes that you'd ride. There is quite a lot of weight on your wrists on the Panigale, all Panigales. And the uh, 899, the V2, no exception. Physically quite a small bike, the 899. I'm quite a small fella, so that's all right, that works all right, but if you're a big guy, you're going to look like an ape on one of these. But uh, comfort relative to sports bikes, it's all right. The uh, pegs aren't particularly extreme, they're not too tucked up underneath you. The handlebars are relatively wide. Uh, you do have a bit of weight on your wrists, as I said before, you are led forward quite a lot on this as sports bikes go. And then the other big elephant in the room is the heat that comes off the seat, as you can see, or off the engine I should say, as you can see it's a beautiful day today, it's about 25 degrees out. I'm filming this at the back end of September and we're having a bit of an Indian summer, I know you're not going to see this probably until late December, so this is what summer was like folks, remember? <laughs> absolutely beautiful day. But yeah, the heat, uh, my gonads are absolutely cooking on here, uh, and I've got the heat shield fitted on this bike, which does make a difference, and incidentally if you've got a Panigale and you suffer from the heat, which you will, but do check out my video on the Panigale heat shield you can fit yourself and it does cut it down by a few degrees makes things a little bit more tolerable uh, and I've got that fitted on this one as I say so yeah comfort wise the 899 I don't know I wouldn't say it's the most uncomfortable sports bike ever but it's certainly not the most comfortable one either so what a difference a day makes eh? I spoke somewhat too soon about there being a lovely Indian summer beautiful day yesterday I come out the next day to do the bits on the uh, on the V2 here and it could not be any different, but absolutely chucking it down. Anyway, there we go, needs must, the things I do for you to bring you reviews, eh? Anyway, so here we are on the V2, and what is, what about comfort on this? Well, it, it does feel pretty much identical to the uh, 899, to be honest, and probably the 959 as well. The seat on here has got an extra 10 mil of padding, so uh, maybe I've just got a particularly bony bum or something, but it doesn't feel that much different. Maybe it's marginally better, but there's not a lot on it. Of course, the uh, foot pegs and the uh, handlebars and the seat position are all exactly the same. The geometry of the bike in that respect is the same. And you also get that uh, roasting of the gonads that I'm experiencing right now, which actually is quite nice on a day like this. It might dry me out a bit. Thank goodness I'm all Gore-Texed up. Anyway, so as far as comfort is concerned on the V2 compared to the 899, absolute dead heat, identical as far as I can tell. Okay, so the uh, engine on the 899. Well, one thing for sure, it sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> I've got uh, Terminioni pipes on this. I paid quite a lot extra for those. These are the titanium system, and if I remember rightly, they're about two and a half grand on top of the cost of the bike. So it's a bit of an unfair comparison because the V2 I'm riding has standard pipes. So this definitely sounds better. It's a lot louder. And it just barks and growls. And also, the, it's got two exhaust outlets on here. Um, so it's spitting out a lot more noise than the V2 but of course this wasn't even Euro 4 friendly let alone Euro 5 so noise and so on not so suppressed and nor is the engine even though it's a smaller capacity it hasn't got the stroked engine it doesn't feel to me any less powerful now I'm not a particularly fast rider or a sports bike expert but I can't tell any difference in power riding the two bikes so the engine on the 899 I find absolutely fine. They're basically the same architecture. Let's uh, jump over to the V2, see what else we can think of. 
Okay, back on the V2 in the wet then, in the engine. Well, it's uh, very, obviously very, very similar to the 899. As I mentioned when I was on the 899, this has been stroked uh, to give it a bit more power. Uh, and that is partly to do with the increasing emissions laws that have happened between the 89 and this. Uh, as I say, the 899 wasn't even Euro 4 compliant, whereas the, that's why they brought the 959 out. This, now the V2, is Euro 5 compliant. So the engine ticks all the right boxes in that respect. But in terms of how it feels, uh, not a lot different when you're going at a reasonable lick. When you're going slowly and around town, it's a lot smoother actually than the 899. I've managed to get the 899 sorted by adding a throttle spacer which makes the slow speed handling much better. The slow speed handling on this is great straight away and then when you want to start to wind her up again, which I'm not going to do now, it's wet and slippery on these leaves. Okay, just a little bit then. Yeah, they feel identical to me. I cannot tell the difference between the two as far as engines concerned. But, if we've got to uh, award one the win over the other, then I will award the V2 the win, because it is Euro 5 compliant. It's a little bit quieter. And it's a little bit smoother at slow speed, so the V2 has it on engine. So the gearbox and quick shifter on the 899. Well that quick shifter works beautifully. It's one of the smoothest quick shifters I've used. It's certainly the smoothest quick shifter I own on a bike. And on the 89 it's an up quick shifter only. Whereas on the V2 it's up and down. And the clutch on the 899 is pretty heavy, has to be said. So uh, no problem at all with the quick shifter and clutch and gearbox on the 899. It does have those caveats. Let's swap over to the V2, see how that compares. So the gearbox and quick shifter on the V2, beautiful. The uh, upshift is exactly the same as the 899, but as I said, this one, if I slow down a bit and listen, has a downshift or auto blipper as well. And, for when you do have to use it, the clutch on here is way lighter than the 899. So as far as uh, quick shifter and gearbox is concerned, the V2 has the win again. The handling on the 899. Just sublime. It's one of those bikes you just point and shoot. It's brilliant. The suspension on here, it's all adjustable so you can set it up for yourself if you want to. The mine is set exactly as it came out the box. And I find it absolutely perfect. It sits in the old Goldilocks zone. It's not too hard, not too soft. Handling a suspension on the 899. One of its big strong points. Slow down. I yeah, really like it. Let's uh, head back to V2, see how that compares. Alright, so on the V2 in the rain, <laughs> the handling and suspension, I think, is actually identical to the 899. I don't think there's been any geometry changes to the bike, and the suspension components themselves, as far as I can tell, are exactly the same. Sax and Showa. And just like the 899, it's a point and shoot vehicle. It just goes where you, where you aim it. You just sort of think where you want to go, and it goes. The handling and suspension on here is beautiful as it is on the 899. I'm going to call it a dead heat on that. No clear winner. So controls and instrumentation. They have been changed quite a lot between the 899 and the V2. This is my 899 again. You see the controls on here look a bit more old school. But in terms of their functionality, they're actually the same as the V2. I'll show you the ones on the V2 in a sec. But they have changed their black on here instead of grey. They don't look quite as new. The big change, of course, is the lack of TFT on here. I've got this uh, monochrome LCD display. But the display itself on the 899, I hope you can see it okay, well, I'm not quite sure I'm pointing the camera. It's very clear. Particularly if the sun's behind you. It's not at the moment, it's at the side of me. But when the sun is behind me and shining on there, it's very bright, that. And it's very easy to read. It's got everything I need on there. It's got my engine braking settings, my uh, traction control settings, everything else on there. You can see the mode. Everything you need to except for a fuel gauge, both bikes don't have that, that's rubbish on both parts. So although it's uh, not a full coloured TFT, I don't particularly miss it. It certainly wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be something that maybe go for the V2 because it's got a TFT. If we hop over to the V2 now, I'll show you the, uh, the TFT on there, see what you think. 
Okay, back on the rainy V2 then. <laughs> that uh, that TFT we were talking about. Here we go. I hope you can see it. In fact, the uh, let's give you a little clean. I don't know if that's helped or hindered. But the TFT. There we go. I hope you can see it through the raindrops to some degree. It's nice and bright. It's got everything you want. But it's actually quite small. The display area looks about half the size of that on the on the 899 on its LCD monochrome display. So although technically a TFT is a step up, I'm not sure it's that great compared to the 899's LCD one. I'm perfectly happy with that. It does look nice in the colour, no doubt about that. But it is still lacking a fuel gauge. So we'll give uh, a win to the V2 on um, instrumentation and controls. The controls, by the way, as I said, uh, on the 89 are exactly the same. They just look a bit different on here. Look, they're grey instead of the black. But we'll give the win to the V2 because it does have a TFT and everybody loves those these days, don't they? But actually, it, I wouldn't sway my decision based on that. Electronics on the 899, I've always thought were pretty comprehensive. I've got uh, three different riding modes on here. I've got the engine braking control, the Ducati quick shifter of course, traction control, ABS. I've got all the electronics on here I would want. They're nowhere near as sophisticated as those on the V2 though. But uh, do I miss anything? Do I feel I need more on the 899? Not really. Back on the V2 and electronics package, there's no doubt. That's one of the things that uh, Ducati have made great play of with the V2. The electronics package on here now is enhanced, way enhanced over the 899. It's pretty much the same as on the V4 on here now. It has all the same stuff as the 89 Plus. It has lean angle sensitive traction control, lean angle sensitive ABS. It's got uh, Ducati wheelie control as well on here. Uh, and no doubt, lots of other stuff besides. So from an electronics point of view, if that's your bag, uh, and weather like this on a bike like this, electronics is quite handy, it has to be said. Then, uh, yeah, the V2 takes the win on the electronics package quite easily. Okay, so, so much for how the bikes compare when you're actually riding them. Uh, what are some of the other subtle differences that I've, uh, that I've spotted about the bikes? Now, these are the bits that are a bit, little bit nerdy and probably don't matter to anyone except me, but uh, one or two things that I've noticed that you may not spot if you just did, uh, you know, if you just had a quick test ride on the bikes or if you're not quite as into uh, baby Panigales as I am. So the first thing is the mirrors. Now, I've mentioned this before. The mirrors on the V2 don't work very well. They shake, rattle and roll, and they give you a terrible view. Whereas the ones on the Panigale 899 work an absolute treat. They have a great view behind, no vibration whatsoever. Whatsoever. but the point that I want to show you was this that these have got a bend here so when you're filtering you can just bring them back like that whereas these mirrors don't have that so uh, what is going on there and also it's very handy if you're in a packed garage like me that you can just fold the mirrors either way um, and you can you know get past without knocking the mirrors uh, these are kind of prone to damage as they are I think so yeah that's a bit of a step back so come on Ducati for the next version of the V2 let's have the foldable mirrors back all right, next slightly nerdy thing that I've noticed is to do with the decals on the bike. Again, not really important whatsoever, but it's just something I noticed. If you have a look at the decals on the new V2, they're in white. If you look at the decals on the 899, they're in silver. So here's the white ones. There you go, on the tank, uh, white. And then on the 899, you can see it's silver. Again, not, uh, you know, no big deal. Let's have a look at the back as well. There we go, it says Ducati there. Look, silver on the 899 and uh, white on the V2. Now I did a little bit of an impromptu survey to see uh, what people preferred. I personally prefer the white on the new V2, but uh, my mates said that they preferred the silver. So personal choice thing, but there we go. Small point, but just something else that's different between the two bikes. Okay, another change that I've noticed, and I think this actually came with the 959, but it's the difference between the 899 and the V2, and that is the foot pegs. If I show you the foot pegs on the 899, here they go, they're like that, and they got a lot of criticism uh, when they came out because they're quite slippery. So people said, I've never found it so, but people's feet used to slip off those. And I'm glad to say, on the V2, if we have a look, we've now got these knurled uh, foot pegs. Now, as I say, I think they were the same on the 959, so it might have been a change for that, but that's definitely a change for the better. Next up, let's take a look at rear end. So this is the V2, check out the backlight on that. Uh, probably would have been better if I turned them on, but you can see we've got this uh, light that goes all the way around with these big old holes through there. Uh, so that's what that looks like. Keep that in your mind. Here's the 899, and uh, we've still got holes, but they're slightly smaller, and the light, instead of going all the way around, is sort of X-shaped, uh, and it looks more kind of shark-like. Uh, so again, I don't know which you prefer there. It's a matter of personal uh, taste. Mine's got a tail tide on it, which definitely looks better, and uh, the V2 definitely needs a tail tide. There's no doubt about that. Um, I'm not sure that's an improvement or not on the V2. I actually quite like the way that it looks on the old 899, but there we go. Again, small point, but uh, just one I thought I'd point out. 
Another thing I've noticed about the uh, V2, which is a bit rubbish actually, is the way the brake reservoir uh, almost, well it does in fact touch the fairing, it doesn't do that on one, I'll show you what I mean, so here's the brake reservoir, look, if you move the handlebars, you can see at the top there, it actually brushes, it actually makes contact there with the windscreen when you turn it, now how often are you actually going to do that? that much when you're actually riding i don't know probably not that often but if you look at my 899 albeit i've got the uh, uh, ducati performance parts reservoir on one but it's a similar size this one has a massive clearance look move it there look there's a there's a whole finger's width uh, there so again uh, the 899 is better than the v2 on that i mean it's probably due to the uh, redesigned fairings on the v2 but uh, it's a bit naff that it touches it isn't it and then the other big change that I think I mentioned uh, earlier is the, the fairings on the bike. The new V2, of course, looks much like the Big Brother V4 now. It's a little bit more, well, I call it bloated looking, whereas I think the uh, 899, which looks like the original 1199, uh, is a bit of a prettier bike. Again, just a personal point. I've taken some photographs here of the two bikes so you can uh, do some sort of side-by-side -side comparisons of what they look like. I don't know if you'd agree with me or not. I'd be interested to know in the comments below whether you think uh, the V2 now looks better than the uh, than the 899 or and the 959 was kind of between the two, if you like. But, uh, yeah, that's another... Another little change that Ducati have made that I'm not convinced is for the better. Right, well, there we go. That's uh, my comparison of the 899 versus the brand new V2. Be fascinated to know whether you agree or disagree with my findings. Uh, there's no doubt the uh, the new V2 is the better bike. The electronics package is definitely superior. Uh, there are some things, like I just mentioned, that I don't like on it so much as the previous versions. Um, sometimes you get the feeling that bike manufacturers just change things year on year just for change's sake, don't you? Not necessarily that it's a good thing, but as I say, love to hear your thoughts on that. Stick your comments below. Um, I guess the big question is, would I, would I upgrade to the the v2 um well the v2 if you buy a new one is around about 15 grand i could probably get about nine grand possibly 10 i don't know for my 899 with the titanium pipes um but you know i'd have to find another five grand so i guess the question for me or the answer for me is no i wouldn't upgrade i love my 899 and uh, on riding the two um next to each other albeit a day apart you will have noticed the weather difference today it's absolutely chucking it down whereas uh, yesterday when i rode this it was lovely and sunny yeah i, I just don't the, the changes aren't that big enough for me to warrant upgrading the 899 or again if you haven't got one of these and you want to get into panigale ownership uh, then it's well worth considering a second hand 899 or 959 because although the v2 is a lovely bike it's not hugely different i don't think it's a it's a step change in performance yes they're incremental changes it's a nicer bike but uh, as i say i'm not sure it's worth five grand if you're thinking about second hand versus brand new anyway there we go that's it for this time hope you've enjoyed that uh, do leave your comments below and I look forward to uh, speaking to you next time until then this has been the mr and fly cheerio first white van of the day jump on the bike first vehicle i see white van splendid